Hello, today I am here with my 2019 TBR. Now, I don't usually do TBR videos because I don't like to be too structured in the way that I read books. I'm very much a mood reader, I will just pick up whatever takes my fancy in the moment. But you can't see it, and I don't know how I'm going to take a thumbnail for this video, but the book, the, the stack of books next to me is pretty big. Um, quick announcement, I suppose, at the beginning of this video, I am putting myself on a book buying ban, with one exception, which I will come to, um, until I've read all of these books, because, frankly, this is a lot of books and it's going to take me quite some time to get through all of these so I'm going to get straight into it. So I'm going to start off with the book that I am currently reading. It's the 29th of December when I'm filming this so there is a small possibility that I will finish this book before 2019 but if I don't then I'll be starting 2019 by finishing this book which is why I'm mentioning it because it is Peace and Turmoil by Elliot Brooks. Now if you don't know Elle has a booktube and authortube channel which if you haven't checked out before I highly recommend that you do. She has a lot of videos about her book that she is self-publishing in around March 2019 and I am super super lucky to be one of those that has been selected to receive an advanced reader copy of this book and so I'm currently reading it and you will see a review of that book on this channel once I finish reading the book and um, so I'm not going to say too much about it here because I'll be in a much better position to give you a synopsis once I've actually read it. Um, and in the meantime, like I say, there are lots and lots of videos about Peace and Turmoil on Elle's channel, so do go and check those out. Moving into the books that I haven't yet started, um, we'll just crack straight on, like I say, grab a cup of tea, hot chocolate, coffee, any drink really, maybe a snack, this could be a long one. First up, we have Fire and Heist by Sarah Beth Durst. This was the December fairy loot box and it's a relatively short one. It is a fantasy about a wyvern that is a person who can turn into a dragon. Can we say yes please? Um, and it's about a heist. So we've got dragons, we've got a heist, we've got likely intrigue. It's not particularly long but it is fantasy. What, what more could I possibly want so really looking forward to that one. Next up we have The Storm Crow by Kaylin Josephson. This is the advanced reader copy from the December Fairy Loot box and I'm going to put the book down because my camera keeps focusing on the face on the cover rather than on me which I know could be really annoying. Um, this book like I said, it's an advanced reader copy, which is out in July of 2019. I'm hoping to get to it before then, so I can let you all know my thoughts in case you're interested. But essentially, this one is meant to be Aragon meets And I Darken, which I haven't read And I Darken, but I have read Aragon, which I did really enjoy when I was younger. And I did read the synopsis of this in my Fairy Loot unboxing, so I'm not going to read it again here because this is already going to be a really, really long video. Sorry, I don't know if you can hear that, but my kittens are playing with each other and I'm just a bit distracted by them because they're just so cute. But anyway, like I was saying, I'm not going to read the synopsis again here because this is already going to be a long video, but essentially this book is fantasy, it involves arranged marriages, it involves princesses and queens and elemental crows, and it just sounds really, really interesting and I'm really looking forward to getting into it. The next book that I plan to read in the year 2019 is To All The Boys I Loved Before by Jenny Han. Now I've seen the film of this on Netflix, it follows Lara Jean who writes love letters to the boys that she has crushes on and they're supposed to be private but they get out and they get sent and she has to deal with the fallout and 
it just sounds like a fun, easy read. Um, I've heard mixed things about the book, but I quite liked the film and it's on my bookshelf and I want to get to it. Next up, we have Throne of Glass by Sarah J Mass, and this is another series that I have heard so many mixed things about. Some people absolutely love it and some people absolutely hate it. It feels like it might be a little bit of a Marmite book, um, but I picked it up because I want to see what all of the fuss is about. This one follows a assassin named Selena who is in prison and she's offered the opportunity to compete in a tournament on the prince's behalf and I mean that really does sound like something that's going to be up my street because I love the tournament trope like seriously love the tournament trope it's one of my favorite tropes ever and I really like when books have assassins in them and Poison Study, which is arguably one of my favourite books of all time, um, by Maria V. Schneider, starts out with our main protagonist in prison. And this starts out with our main protagonist in prison. And both of them get offered an alternative way out. So this does sound like something that's going to interest me. Um, if I enjoy it, then I will continue on with the series, but my book buying ban will still apply until I've read all of the others because there are a lot of books here that I need to get to. So it's quite possible that I'll save this towards the end so that if I do get completely gripped by it, um, I can go ahead and buy the rest of the series without guilt. Next up we have The Goblin Emperor by Catherine Addison and this is a book that I got as a surprise book when I was in Amsterdam. I mentioned it in the haul video but essentially there was this bookshop in Amsterdam called the American Book Centre where they had some mystery books that are all wrapped up in brown paper with just a couple of key terms on the front and you buy it not knowing what the book is and this is the book that I got. It follows a half goblin who, following the assassination of all of those in front of him for the throne, takes the throne and has to uncover the mystery of the assassination of his father and half-brothers. Sounds really interesting and I'm looking forward to getting to it. Next up I have a couple of books that I have actually already started and haven't managed to finish in the year 2018 and I am going to try and finish them in 2019 but I am not going to force myself, especially with this one which is Two Dark Reigns. I am a good way, of, good way through it, I'm on page 241 of 447. So I'm way over half, well not way over halfway, but I'm over halfway through this one. Um, but it was just sending me into a reading slump. This series hasn't done as much for me as I was hoping. It sounded sort of helpful. It sounded sort of like The Hunger Games, um, but it's not. It's not at all. It's nowhere near that vicious and I think that just disappointed me. Um, also the pacing is a little bit slow for my liking, um, but essentially this series follows three sisters who are separated at the age of six to learn their respective types of magic and when they attain the age of 16 they have to battle to the death for the, for the throne. Um, but like I said, that synopsis makes it sound really brutal and it's not. So I will try and finish this one because I'm still semi-interested in what's going to happen and I think that the last book might be out this year, I'm not sure. Um, so I'd like to finish it but I also don't want to send myself into another reading slump so we'll see on that one. Another one that I want to finish is Requiem for the Sun by Elizabeth Hayden. This one I'm not especially far into, I'm only on page 58 and it's a reread for me anyway so I'm not going to prioritise this over any of the other books that I have. Shinji, leave my camera alone. No. Shinji, no. Shinji, no. Shinji, no. 
I'm sorry if my camera was moving around there, Shinji was climbing up on the box I have it balanced on. Um, yeah, so I'm not prioritising this over any of these other first time reads, but if I get a chance I would like to finish this book and the rest of the series, which I do have, but I'm not going to show you here because this is already, again, going to be a long enough video. The next one I have is The Wizards of Once by Cressida Cowell. This is a middle grade book about a wizard and a witch who have been battling for so long that they can't really remember what it is that they're battling over and it may just be that they have to come together and fight together for once. Um, this sounds like a really fun read and it's full of illustrations it, and sort of fun formatting so I'm hoping that this will be a light read that I can throw in between some of the heavier books that I have here. Next up we have Vengeful by V.E. Schwab. I read Vicious about a week ago and I did enjoy it. Um, there's a lot of hype around the series and while the book is good and I did enjoy it, I don't necessarily think it warrants the amount of hype that it has. That being said, I did enjoy it a lot more than the Shades of Magic series, which I've mentioned before on this channel, and I am interested to find out what happens in Vengeful. This will form part of the Schwabathon that I am hosting along with Nisha from On the Margins Of. And speaking of the Schwabathon, the next book that I plan to read is The Unbound. This is a bind up of The Archived and The Unbound, and I have already read The Archived, and so I need to get to The Unbound. I actually really liked The Archived, and I am interested to see what is going to happen in book two, but I hope I'm not going to be disappointed because there are some things that I would really, really like for Schwab to deal with in book two and I don't yet know whether they are going to be dealt with because I haven't actually read the synopsis for book two. I generally don't read synopses for um, sequels because I like to go into them just on the basis of having enjoyed book one. So those two. Then we have Shadow and Bone by Lee Bardugo. This is the first book in the Grisha trilogy and the, the Grisha trilogy precedes the Six of Crows Crooked Kingdom duology. I don't know if the duology actually has a name other than just the names of the books pass. And then I believe that Lee Bardugo is releasing in January a book that is a sort of spin-off series but in the same universe following one of the characters Nikolai. Um, I just mentioned that in case you've read this and you're interested and didn't didn't know about that but I've, I've seen it mentioned quite a lot and people seem quite excited about it um, but I haven't ever read any of these books so I'm interested to get to them. This series, or this book at least, follows Alina Starkov, who is a soldier but discovers that she has magic, so she has to go off to magic school to learn how to use her powers. And again, magic school is just one of those tropes that I really enjoy, so I am looking forward to getting to this one. And again, it's part of a series, but my book buying ban will still apply. Even if I like this, I am not allowed to buy the other books until I've read all of the books that I'm mentioning in this series because otherwise I just won't ever get to them. There's a lot of books here and I'm really looking forward to reading all of them but I just won't get to them if I keep buying more books so that's the plan. Next up we have The Long Walk by Stephen King which was written under his pen name Richard Buckman. Um, a little bit difficult to get hold of. My mum managed to get it for me for Christmas in secondhand copy, which I'm really pleased about. This is a dystopian book which follows Ray Garrity as he participates in the yearly long walk along with 99 other 16 year olds. The rule of this walk is that everybody must walk at four miles per hour for as long as possible and the last man or woman, is it a man or woman? I don't know, the last person standing wins. 
and they win whatever they want for the rest of their lives. But it sounds kind of brutal because the last sentence of the synopsis is three warnings and you're out of the game permanently. Ellipses. So, bit ominous. Haven't read Dystopian for a while. I usually I'm not a fan of the endings of dystopian novels, but I tend to like the beginning and middle. Um, I haven't actually read anything by Stephen King, so I am really looking forward to this one. And it's been on my TBR for a very long time. So I suspect that I'll probably read this fairly, fairly early on. In fact, I might even read this next. Jury's out on that. Next up we have a book called The Toymakers by Robert Dinsdale. This is a book that I got for Christmas so it featured in that video but essentially this to me sounds a little bit like Night at the Museum but in a toy shop which I'm here for. That sounds fun and again it'll probably be a book that I use to break up some of the heavier books that I have on this list. Next up I have a book that I'm not necessarily going to read from cover to cover but it's Cat Stories by various authors, it's a compilation of various short stories about cats and again I'll probably just use this as brief little in-betweens if I'm reading stuff that's a bit heavy or I'm reading things that I just need a break from at any point, this will be a good one to just dip in and out of. Next up we have a trilogy which is The Queen of the Tearling by Erica Johansson. I don't know too much about this series, um, I know that it's YA, I know that it is fantasy, I know that it follows a girl named Kelsey Glynn who is taking over the throne and that's about all I know apart from the fact that it was recommended by Reagan from the Channel Peruse project and we have similar reading tastes so it was on my list and I got the trilogy for Christmas so I will be reading all of these whether I like them or not no I'm joking <laughs> I don't anticipate it being a problem uh, next up we have Knots and Crosses by Mallory Blackman, another one that I got for Christmas and all I really know about it is that it sounds to me like a Romeo and Juliet retelling. So I'm looking forward to that one. Then we have the Girl of Fire and Thorns series by Ray Carson and this is where we come into that one book buying ban exception that I mentioned at the beginning of the video because I got for Christmas book two and three and the short stories but my grandma didn't realise that this wasn't book one that this is just the prequels um so I don't actually have book one to this series so I'm going to have to pick that up because I can't read books two and three and the short stories without reading book one um, so that will be the one exception to my rule. When I come around to reading this series, I will pick that one up as well. Another book that I plan to dip in and out of is the Bedtime Stories for Stressed Out Adults. Um, I'm planning to just put this on my bedside table and just flip through it as and when. It's a collection of short stories and poetry that's written in a lyrical manner that's supposed to help with sleep. I mean, I don't know if it's actually going to work. It'll just be nice as something to pick up every now and again if I need a little break from whatever it is that I'm reading at the time. And last but not least is Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them by J.K. Rowling but illustrated by Olivia, Olivia Lomenek Gill. This, I mean, this doesn't really need any introduction, I don't think. It's just a compilation of descriptions of the fantastical beasts that appear in the Harry Potter universe. And again, I'll probably just dip in and out of this as and when. It has one of these handy ribbon bookmarks. So I'll probably just read a little bit here and there. But the illustrations in this are just so, so pretty. And... I'm really looking forward, I'm <laughs> really looking forward to reading this one. And that's it, if, as if that weren't enough. I can see that I've been filming for like 25 minutes, so hopefully I can cut this down a little bit for you. Um, but you can see why I'm putting myself on a book buying ban, hopefully. This is a lot of books and I need to get through them. 
Um, I've still got my Audible subscription, so I'll carry on listening to you audiobooks as well. But, yeah, I'm just looking at this pile thinking, wow, this is a lot of books. Um, again, I don't know what order I'm going to read these in, but I'm really looking forward to each and every one of them. So it should be a really, really good reading year. But that's it for now. Thank you so, so much for watching. If you like this video and want to see more like this from me, then do think about hitting that subscribe button. I'd be so, so grateful. And I hope to see you again soon. Thanks. Bye.